Team is one of the biggest challenges that we faced. Yeah. You know, I would argue that right now, team members are a bigger challenge than dental insurance companies, mm -hmm. corporate dentistry, you know, all of those things, because we're so worried about where we're going to get team members, what they're yeah. going to be like. And maybe I'm just speaking for myself here, but I felt that I've allowed people to get away with more than I would have in the past. We've been misled to believe that dentistry, more specifically the dental business, has to be complicated. Dentistry can be simple and dentistry should be simple. Welcome to another episode and another week of the Dentistry Made Simple podcast. I'm your host, T-Bone, and I'm joined by a lovely co-host, Meredith Cooper-Jones. Meredith, how are you doing? Hello, I'm back. You know, I'm kind of super excited to have uh, the studio kind of going again here at the retreat. Yeah. I'm excited to have it moved here uh, so that we can get out of my house from doing these and kind of get a little bit more focused doing them here. Uh, this week, we're going to bringing you a Q&A episode where we'll be answering some of the common questions that you have or that we've gotten from you. And if you have questions that you'd like to submit, all you have to do is email them to marketing at 3d-dentists.com or you can message me on any of our social media channels. So before we get going into this week's questions, let's turn it over for our message from our sponsor, Meredith Jones. Well, I'm not the sponsor, I'm just the message of the sponsor from 3D <laughs> Dentist. Um, so I have a review before we get started. If you have not left us a review on either Apple Podcasts or just a Google review for 3D Dentist, we would greatly appreciate it. This one says, clear and concise advice. This podcast is a great listen, designed to stick to the point and hammer down on implementation of any subject that they cover. You will learn something new every time. Listening to these podcasts has helped me reimagine my perspective and reverse my burnout I was beginning to feel. I love that. That's it's, very kind. No, but it's, you know, it's, it's really, honestly, that's what dentistry should yeah. be, right? You know, dentistry should be, as, especially as a practice owner. Yeah is that it should be about what you want, right? Well, I think it's more than just the practice owner. Yes, it's your vision and mm -hmm. you should get that out there. But one of my favorite things to share is, and I don't even know that we've ever talked about it on the podcast, but uh -oh. our associate <laughs> said, um, this is what I thought dentistry would be Me, like yeah. when I got out of practice. And then she worked at, I mean, I don't know if I want to say horrible offices, but offices she wasn't happy in. Yeah. Well, one and, office she was definitely not happy in. Yeah. I think there was a couple she was yeah. not happy at. And so when you create that vision for your practice, but you also share it with yeah. sometimes 10, 12, 15 other people. And I think, honestly, on that same note, that's one of the things that's keeping uh, associates from enjoying being in a private practice office yeah. because the private practice owner itself, it's a hot mess. Right. You know, and, and that's hot really what our, <laughs> that's what our mastermind program is really about. It's about teaching dentists to take control of their practice, yeah. you know, implementing fundamental systems that'll last them a lifetime, That'll help them not only in their practice, but in their clinical career and also in their personal lives as well. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, listen, if you're interested in joining our mastermind, uh, it's an application process. Just go on our website, 3d-dentist.com, or you can reach out to Meredith directly and she'll be happy to talk to you uh, and see if it works. So let's get into this week's episode with some questions, Meredith. Yeah, so this week we're just going to ask T-Bone some questions that you guys have asked either through social media or reached out to us with. Um, Questions some people ask me on the phone sometimes. Mm. Um, so I thought we, it would be cool to get Appropriate your Appropriate questions, people. Yeah. <laughs> Not when they slide into my DMs. <laughs> Please don't. <laughs> I, I don't think that's a real thing anymore, is it? Uh, I think it is. Okay. Yeah. Well, nobody slid into my DMs unless Caroline is uh, deleting them before I see them. She's filtering this for you. <laughs> she doesn't want to tempt you. All right, so we're going to talk about some things that I thought it would be cool to get your perspective on that people ask. So let's get started with yeah, our first question. You're in charge. How do I get my team to be on the same page and more engaged? Yeah, it's, you know, it's a great question. Um, in today's world, um, team is one of the biggest challenges that we face. Yeah. You know, I would argue that right now team members are a bigger challenge than dental insurance companies, mm -hmm. corporate dentistry, you know, all of those things because we're so worried about where we're going to get team members, what they're yeah. going to be like. And maybe I'm just speaking for myself here, but I felt that I've allowed people to get away with more than I would have in the past. Uh, because Absolutely. You, so I, I, always, wait, I always tell him this. 
some of these people would not have lasted five years ago. <laughs> no, probably not. And he not. says, no, you're right. Absolutely not. But, but that's also a good evolution, right? Yeah. Because we have to mature. We have to adapt to the changing marketplace, the changing personalities uh, of, of the team members and employees. So, you know, I, I think the first step to get people on the same page is to kind of just share the page. You know, and, and, you know, I I feel like a broken record so many times when we talk, Meredith. It's the first step is the leader, the owner of the practice has got to figure out what what kind of practice are you trying to build? Are you a family dentist? Are you a general dentist? Are you a a hybrid general dentist that does certain specialty procedures? Or are you all under one shop type of practice? You know, what, what kind of practice are you trying to be? You know, you've got to get clear yourself as the owner, or even as an associate, what kind of associate are you trying to be? What procedures are you wanting to be or do? And then the step after you get clear yourself is you've got to share it. And for me, I like sharing that on a whiteboard. I like sharing it with goal settings and sharing the goals. Uh, but there's something about having a whiteboard with these goals on there so that people get reminded of it on a daily basis. It's kind of like the, the Notre Dame sign that everybody taps on the way out to the game, you know? It's a reminder of what they're there for. I mean, unfortunately for Notre Dame, they're not really <laughs> <laughs> maybe living up to some of those things all the time. But um, I, I think to me, getting people on the same page is that, okay? Now, in terms of engagement, uh, team engagement, it's very difficult to get team to be engaged if they're not first on the same page and rowing in the same direction. And to me, engagement is a, it's a daily activity. You can't hold a monthly meeting and think that that's enough for engagement. To me, engagement is a daily activity. Engagement starts with, uh, I'll give you an example for myself. I got reminded that I need to make my little circle around the office to say good morning to everybody when I came in uh, because I come in, uh, I come in, I have a later start time than everybody else because it reminded team members I was there, it allowed me to engage with them uh, in all of that. Uh, so that's there. And then another way I engage is, is I try to sit with every team member organically at least once a week and talk to them about what's going on, whether it's a quick hello and, uh, you know, more than a quick hello in the hallway or sometimes if I notice a few people are sitting back in the break room for lunch, I'll purposely go back there at lunchtime. Um, you know, those kind of things. It's that, it's that connection. And, and what I've always found is that when you make a relationship connection with team members, uh, they're engaged, rowing in the same direction, and they're willing to fight and run through a brick wall for you. So to me, you got to get people on the same, ga- same page by getting clear about what you want to be, sharing that with them, and then having you know, daily connection with each of your team members. And then you know, when things aren't going in the right direction, you got to give them that mention and accountability that's so important. Uh, that's how you keep people engaged. Okay. Fair enough. Anything yeah. for you to add? No, I think um, creating leaders and giving people something to be proud of yeah. is another thing to keep them engaged. Like, it, even if it's simple things. So I know you had everyone in the office is responsible for a number. Yeah. And that could be a different number. It could be some people's could be production. Some people's could be the number of things they're responsible for, like implants or clear liners, even night guards. Yeah. You know, just because it gives everybody accountability. And so then, important. And as a team, everyone, not one person is just delivering and scanning for night guards. That's kind of a team effort. Yeah. So it kind of creates that camaraderie of, well, she's accountable for that. I'm going to help her with that yeah. number and that kind of thing. So, yeah, well, let's get into, that was great. Yeah. Let's get into of our next question. This one is kind of for the practice as a whole. How has marketing changed in 2022? It's a great question. Um, how has marketing changed in 2022? I will argue that it is, it's going to sound crazy, mm-hmm. okay? But it's the easiest and the hardest it's ever yeah. been. Um, you know, look, I started, I started, I became a dentist in 1999. I started my own practice in 2000. And 2000, Yellow Pages was still around. I was just going to say there was, that was like Facebook hadn't even come out No, yet. I mean, nothing. Literally so, marketing yeah. at that point was uh, Yellow Pages and direct mail. Mail. You know, there might have been internet, but not really yeah. much going on on the internet. Uh, you know, websites kind of existed, yeah. but websites were really just a brochure of your practice, if nothing else. So really, it was just postcards and uh, flyers or mailers yeah. that you send to people. So, and now we use, we'll send you a postcard as the opposite of marketing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> now our postcard technique is very different. Yes, yeah. you're right. We should, uh, one day we should, we should talk do, about that. Yeah. Um, 
So, and then I kind of look at, that was the first phase of marketing. Uh, and then the second phase of marketing was kind of that 2010 era. And that's when social media kind of came about and Google ads and things like that came about. And, and really then was about doing simple ads on Facebook and Google. They were inexpensive, pretty targeted. Uh, you know, cookies were readily available on every phone. Uh, and, and But still the traditional medium of display ads, of direct mail was still kind of, kind of important then. Uh, the other thing that kind of started in 2010 uh, was websites started to change. And what I mean by that is SEO, search engine optimization, uh, became more and more important. And now we kind of move into this new era of marketing. Let's call it the 2020s. And what I would tell you, and, and I, I know some marketing specialists are going to disagree with me, uh, but I would like to make a controversial statement here. In 2020s, SEO is dead. Search engine optimization is not as important for the traditional dental practice as it ever was. And here's why, and here's how it kind of leads into the answer to this question. Marketing in 2022 is no longer a catch-all, hey, I'm a dentist, come see me, I'm a family dentist, uh, because you're surrounded by thousands of other family dental dentists. Mm -hmm. Marketing in 2020 and beyond is really about marketing very specific procedures, and that's each specific procedure has a specific demographic and a specific way they respond. And we're living in a world where patients want to be educated and learn and influenced before they come in. In other words, they want to learn more about you before they even come in for the consultation. So that way, when they come in for the consultation, it's really about saying yes and, and, and confirming that you're not catfishing. Is that the yeah. word? Yeah. That you're not catfishing them. Uh, and that's really how marketing has changed. You know, Facebook has gotten more expensive. It's gotten more difficult. Google ads, pay-per-clicks have become more and more expensive. It's not that it doesn't work, yeah. but doing pay-per-clicks for a general dentist or a family dentist, it just doesn't make sense. And, and, and your, your range or your radius is, is so much smaller there. But when you start getting into, say, all on X's or smile makeovers, or, smile makeovers or clear line of therapy with, you know, brand names and stuff, then you start being, being able to have a much broader catch range of how far patients are willing to drive. And your marketing has to be very specific for the procedure that you're doing. You have to set yourself up as an expert. Uh, you have to have social proof through reviews and testimonials. You have to influentially educate your patients as to what the procedure is, how it works. You know, you want them to really kind of self-select themselves out right. or self-select them in. So I would argue that marketing today is more about personal branding than ever before. I heard a great statement the other day. Um, when we're marketing, we're now marketing two, type, two things. We're marketing personal brand and you're marketing the business. But the more engaged and the better and bigger your personal brand is, the more engaged and bigger your business will get. Uh, and, and it kind of kind of goes both ways. You got to build your personal brand to help build the business. Yeah. And, and that's really how marketing has changed, at least from how I see it in 2022. I was going to mention that if you didn't say that, uh, because in our last mastermind call, mm -hmm. we had somebody who said that he Googled something about an implant to be able to share with the patient or maybe the steps of an implant yeah. or, you know, what an implant is like. And another person in the mastermind who has built a YouTube channel yeah. and built their brand, Jock, yeah. um, came up and that's what he shared with his patient. Yeah. And I was, you know, and had he been close enough to jock, that patient is, probably would have left and yeah. gone to him, right? And, and, and that's really the risk we run today. Yeah. Is that... People are willing to travel. Listen, too. our friend Grant Olson, yeah. your destination smile, I don't know what percentage, but a good percentage of his business Almost are all. people flying in yeah. to see him. Mm -hmm. And when you fly, and, and it's not like he's, he's in Springfield, Missouri. Yeah. So it's not like he's in New York, it's LA, or anything like this. It's easy to get to, and it's not like he's any cheaper than anyone yeah, else. Yeah, so you become a perceived expert. Yeah. And when you become a perceived expert, people seek you out. Mm -hmm. And that's really, again, what's, it's personal branding at its best. Yeah, well, right. that's great. That's how marketing has changed in 2022. Let's get into our next question. And this kind of goes yeah. with that, carries into that. Um, a lot of people ask, how do I do more implants or more of a specific service? Yeah. How do I do more cosmetic cases? Yeah. Um, and I think it kind of goes hand in hand with yeah. that branding stuff. Yeah, in a, in a way, yes. Yeah. But let, let's let's look at it this way. There's, there's really 
There's two ways I look at doing any niche procedure, yeah. a specialty type procedure. One is your internal customers, and the second way is attracting new customers through direct-to-consumer marketing. Mm -hmm. Now, what I believe, and, I, and I'm a firm believer in this, you don't need to or should be spending any money on direct-to-consumer marketing until you have a good foundation in place for your internal patients. So to me, what I would like to focus on with this question is, what can you do internally with your existing patient base to do more of anything? One is, the first step is you got to know the skills, okay? In other words, you got to have a clinical bucket that can say, yes, I can do these things, and hey, how often am I saying no to a specific type of procedure, X, Y, Z. Second thing is, we got to take assessment of what our market is. You know, in other words, do our patients have missing teeth, if we're talking about implants? Do our patients have crooked teeth, if we're talking about aligners? Do our patients want cosmetic dentistry or want chips and graps and things like that, or are they vain, you know, when it comes to cosmetic dentistry? So to me, one of the things that would be great would be to go through a whole week and just count how many missing teeth you see in, a pra in your practice and how many patients are missing at least one tooth first, molar, and forward, and that gives you a good idea, and maybe you do this for one, two, three weeks, to give you a good idea of what the potential is within your practice. And what we'll find is that we have so much potential within our practice that there's no reason to go outside of our practice. Then to me, it, it kind of goes down our case acceptance workflow. The next step is then saying, giving our uh, diagnosing it. In other words, hey, Meredith, have you ever given a thought about your missing tooth? Hey, Meredith, have you given any thought about the gap in your teeth? Yes, you know, that yes, kind of things. Yes. You know, so that's the diagnosis part. And then the communication part is talking to them about the benefits. You know, getting replacing missing tooth is going to keep other teeth from shifting. It's going to allow you to chew better. It's going to allow you to, you know, get in the gap fix and give you smile with confidence and all of those things. Or you can chew better if you're missing a lot of teeth. And then really kind of the next thing that falls in line is, is, is the money part of it. And that's where firm financial arrangements come in, where you work on making things affordable. And affordability is all about monthly payment plans. We know that in, in today's world. And the next part of it is schedule. Do you have time in your schedule or do you create time in your schedule uh, to do this? And one extra part of this is, is these types of procedures have a perceived fear with them. And, and so you need to have sedation. That's why our oral sedation class is doing so good, you know, yeah. is because we're starting to get through to people that it's time, fear, and money. Do you have the time in your schedule? Do you address I think that's fear? The biggest hold up. Do you address fear with sedation? Yeah. And do you make, I'll, I'll argue that people will make the time. They'll stay late and do things. I yeah. think it's really the money part of it that people don't have a good financial menu. They don't have a good, good third party companies that they're working with or they're not willing to be the bank themselves. So that's kind of, uh, kind of where I would answer uh, how do I do more of any particular procedure? So, Meredith, I want to thank you for asking me the questions yes. this week. Uh, for those of you listening in or watching, uh, for the few viewers that watch on YouTube, for those of you listening, if you'd like to see my pretty face and Meredith's face for radio, you can go to our YouTube channel. She knows I'm joking. You can go to our YouTube channel and check us out in real person. Uh, but, again, if you have questions, send them to Caroline at marketing at 3 d dentist Com or slide into my DMs and send me your questions and we'll be happy to put them on next month's episode of Ask T-Bone. But otherwise, we'll see you next week on the Dentistry Made Simple podcast. <laughs>